picking up where we left off with our Hawaiian sunset. We have all of the channels that we need, which represent saved selections. At this point, I'd like to open the postcard image as a reference image so we can use it for inspiration as well as sampling colors from the actual image as we go. Let's begin with a deep gold and fill the entire image with it. So I will select all and use either the paint bucket or in this case, the edit fill command. Fill with current color at 100% opacity. That's just fine. Now I can start loading individual channels and paint with my airbrush variants. Let's load the tree. And actually, let's go to the select load selection command and load the tree from there. And I'll click OK. And actually, I don't want to see the channel necessarily. So. Now I can use my coarse spray with purple and just go to town over here. That worked rather well. There's something down here I'm not too crazy about, but maybe that will get straightened out when we add some other painted sections. Now I think I'll go darker and use this very rough spray effect to sort of taper off to a lighter color as we go up there. Okay, let us now load the upper sky selection. Upper sky will replace the current selection and I'll use this yellow and again, use coarse spray to get all of those pixels covered, including the ones on the right. That's looking good. And I'm gonna deselect just to make sure I like the effect. And I do. So let us continue by loading the middle sky, which if I want to follow along with this would be gold, but that's not going to be too interesting. Let's make it a brighter orange and go in there with our coarse spray. Oh, that's quite interesting. And I might want to use a lighter orange and a fine spray to taper even finer than that. Fine tip soft air might help me make some streaks as we had some streaks in the original photo. So that's looking okay. And at this point, probably want to do a save. So I'll use iterative save and that's all set, giving me the next numerical version. So let's continue with loading selection of the lower sky. And this in the sample is a very dark red. So I'll try that with the coarse spray. And I think I'll switch to the variable spattery airbrush, which has some nice color variation here. So that's working out well. Working on the water, let's load selection water. Click OK and stick with this variable spattery airbrush. Not with that color, however, let's sample a blue. Nice light blue. I can go to a darker blue if I want to do some parts darker. And I've created a little bit of variation here. Maybe get in between those two colors and let's bring that back to the center once again. And I will load the dark water. So that's going to be found here as dark water. And when I click OK, I can sample a dark blue and use this variable spatter effect. That's looking pretty good. And I'll deselect and maybe load water once again. And lighten up some of that. So I'm going to go for that lighter blue and that kind of settles that. So how about those clouds? Let's load the clouds. And what I'd like to do with the clouds is create a kind of a 3D effect. So first I'm going to paint them with a light orange. There we go. Go right through there and possibly give them a bit of a yellow highlight. I want a smaller brush for that upper highlight. And then the lower 
shadow should be a darker orange and I'll stick with my fine tip and see if that's going to work out. Now I need to invert the selection so that I can paint behind those clouds and I'm not quite ready for that. I want to put in a little bit more of a lower effect here and now I can go and select the invert so now I can paint behind those clouds with a darker shadow and I'll choose from this lower sky and stick with fine tip and so now I am beautifully getting the shadow behind those clouds let's see how that looks without the marching ants and that's coming along pretty well so let's see what that looks like at this point there are certain gaps in here which I can repair by hand as it were or I could go back and repair my channels so Let's take the lower sky channel, for example, and I see where some of my problems are. I will use my fine detail with white in order to correct some of that. And over here as well, let's turn on the photo so we can see that we need to put in a little bit more there. So now let's see if that works better when I load the lower sky. Lower sky is going to now look better when I add some coarse spray using this color. I want variable spray, that's what I want there. Okay, so that's turning out a little bit better. And I think I can just make a few changes here by hand without necessarily going to the channels. I'm just using my fine detail air and I'm picking up color by using my option or alt key to convert to the dropper tool. And that's probably going to be okay. There's an area up here that I'm not too crazy about. I'd like to soften that. So let us look at the upper sky and see if we can make for some softening of this area. Now I'm going to load that again. First I'll go back to looking at the entire graphic so far. So load the upper sky. And now I will use my yellow and my coarse spray and go in there and I do believe that that's a bit more pleasant looking. I want to create some variation in the lower sky as well even though I don't think I have to change the channels lower sky and simply going darker and using a coarse spray near the bottom, I can create something quite interesting down there. And so I think that's gonna work out just fine. Let's add the Aloha message. And that involves going to our text tool, typing Aloha in Lithos Pro Black is my font of choice, but you could use any other that you wish with the text panel open. We will use a curve ribbon style and recall that we need to adjust that curve with our shape selector. So I'll go in there and make for some adjustments. And if we're happy with the size, we can just go and look at our layers panel and we can move it into position with the layer adjuster tool. That looks pretty good. I'd like to explore some possibilities for filling that type with possibly a gradient. Let's find a gradient to work with. So we'll go to our gradient panel. There we go. How about this dusky sky gradient? Let's use our paint bucket and when we attempt to fill, we will have to commit. So I will commit and I see the result there. Not too bad. Let's put a drop shadow on that type using effects objects create drop shadow and I do believe we have our postcard